Okay, so the first, the first version went up and I was, I was quite pleased with that. Like I thought the actors did a phenomenal job. And then uh, Espenard called me up again and said, that, you know, we want to commission a full staging. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I went back to all my transcripts and highlighted bits that I thought, oh, should be in the, pla you know, that I hadn't put in the first one, you know, so I was swapping out bits and pieces. But you don't often get the feedback that was afforded by doing a, a stage reading at the Esplanade in under the Raw studio. So there was a half an hour after each performance, there was a post-show dialogue, which I taped. And people would be speaking, uh, would be asking questions. Like one lady asked, uh, there was so much laughter from the audience looking at this, this play. And I never thought, should that be inappropriate? Because the thing is, is that I've spoken to, you know, I take things for granted because I spoke to all of the, the guys. They spent a lot, most of them spent a lot of time making me laugh. That comment didn't affect me much until the parents were brought in for day of sentencing. Because there's a moment in day of sentencing where one of the characters, you can laugh at him, he's really funny. Actually, he was one of the interviews where I just went, this is left of field. I just spent the whole time laughing. And um, when the parents are there, you stop laughing. So now that the parents are there, there's a massive difference between that. I'm not saying that the show is now totally serious and there's no laughing. There is laughter, but that moment is really is so terrible you know what I mean? <laughs> that you can't like you can't laugh. So yeah, that's one small change in a scene uh, that really was affected by having the parents present. And it's nice this time uh, with the support of Center Forty Two and looking at the second iter iteration, being able to interview the parents of the inmates. You know, so you get to really see what they know and what they don't know. Yes, I interviewed, uh, I asked uh, around and one set of parents said yes. So I just got this one set of parents. And you walk into their homes, they don't know you from a bar of soap. You're sitting there, they're offering you tea or a drink and they're talking about a very um, serious personal matter. They're crying in front of you sometimes. Sometimes they're getting very angry in front of you. And sometimes they're apologizing because they feel that, you know, they can't explain it how they wish to explain it. Or sometimes they, uh, yeah, they can't find the right word and they'll apologize. It's like, what are you doing? Like, I should be the one apologizing for bringing all this up again. I remember the first time that Sui Lin and Case you read the lines. It was heartbreaking. Because you, <laughs> because then it all makes sense. You go, yeah, of course you're going to cry when you're charged because it's, it's not as if you don't know that you're going to go in because Singapore, uh, the court system is very cut and paste. You know, if you, if you do drugs, then this is how, how long you're going to get first charge. If you're, you know, loan sharking, this is how much you're going to get, blah, blah, blah. So it's not as if they don't know how long they're going to get and it's not as if they don't know that they're going to be found guilty. Do you know what I mean? They're going to the court knowing these things. But... When they realize in court that they're going in and they see their parents' faces, all of them can't, they can't hold up a strong facade anymore. To the extent that some of the characters talk very openly about lying to their mother in particular. One character lied to their mum and said, no, 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 it's okay, I'm just going to court. It will be a fine, just a, a fine. I'll pay it and I'll come back. And then he knew that it wasn't going to be a fine. So he, he brought his friends with him and when he was taken into jail, the friend went back and told the mum. And the first thing the mum said when she went into business was, why didn't you tell me, you know? But he said, it's going to be really sad for me on that day. And I also got a female inmate because I always wanted the female inmate's point of view. How different was the experience? And it's very different. I think, if I'm not wrong, they're in the men's old prison. So it's four four man cells rather than eight man cells. And they have a lot more diversity in terms of what jobs they can do. So a lot of them go, a lot of them work and a lot of them go out and they man the call center, you know, at the prison. So when you call the prison, you're actually speaking to a female inmate, uh, especially when you're organizing visits. So that's, that's what I was told by one of the women. Um, and they do laundry and things like that. 
they don't have yard. Uh, the female inmate that I spoke to went to yard only twice. So that means she's inside her cell 24 hours a day. So that was very full on to hear. Yeah, I would not want to stay in a room 20, who, who wants to. Even that one hour a day would give you some sanity. I also got very close to interviewing uh, prison wardens, but um, they're very reticent because they don't want to get into trouble uh, because they are working within the prison service or even retired, you know, uh, prison um, wardens don't want to. Like I had one lady, but, you know, in the end she just went, oh, I can't, I don't, yeah. So that was, that was interesting because when I spoke to the, the people that I first interviewed, you know, what else would you like in the play or da-da-da-da, they all wanted to hear the warden's point of view because the wardens are the people they see as, as much as they see their other, you know, uh, the other seven men in their cell. And so I found that really interesting because I don't know if I would want to hear the warden's point of view, but yeah, they all wanted to hear it. So we don't have speaking wardens. We have wardens in the show that move the set around. <laughs>